Hello, this is John Majori with Majori on Bowie.com, and you have been waiting for a full week to hear part two of my discussion with the one and only Ava Cherry, singer, model, and performer who visitors to my blog know because of her collaborations with David Bowie and Luther Vandross. Uh, she was a key figure in the creation of the Young Americans album, one of David Bowie's most beloved albums, and has plenty of her own very excellent solo material, including her new song, Fire. Uh, we've been talking about some of the stories that she writes about in her memoir, All That Glitters, which is now available in paperback. It's fantastic, and we can't get through all the stories. That's why you should buy the book. So, Ava Cherry, thank you for joining me again. Uh, the, the first part of our discussion is really wonderful, and uh, I'm really appreciative of the time you're giving us. Oh, today. John, what a blast. Love it, love it. Love talking mm -hmm. to your fans and your and your and the people that support you and uh it just it, it 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 gladdens my heart to be able to talk about some of these memories because sometimes when you reach back it's so deep you know like some of the things that I remember um but that was an era that was like no other and uh you know there'll never be another in 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 my mind there'll never be another David Bowie or Luther Vandross never yeah <laughs> Yeah, to, to, I think that's right, and it's it's so sad that both of them are gone because yeah, you know they both should it still be is. making music. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Uh, so let me ask you about a project that you you worked on with Bowie that um, uh, maybe is not necessarily the best known, which was the Astronauts uh, Project. What what was that all about? Uh, about the astronauts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what happened with the astronauts is the, the astronauts was originally supposed to be the backing band that was going to support David through the Ziggy era, um, starting with um, the 1980 floor show. It yeah. was. It was. Yeah. It was the astronauts. Period. Like that. And um, you saw visually what that looked like and sounded like. Um, but then after we did the 1980 floor show. And we lost the other members. David decided to make it Ava Cherry and the Astronauts. Yeah. And so we started going into the studio and RCA and stuff like that and recording some tracks. We had already started doing a few things in uh, Chateau Deauville in France, but um, we really got more into doing it when we got to New York. And, uh, you know, so David started doing songs with me, you know, um, I Am a Laser, God Only Knows Her. But the songs, the songs that actually ended up on the album, much to my chagrin, were demos. They were not finished tracks or final tracks. Um, we, we did them as demos to see what they would kind of sound like, and they, and they weren't meant to be released. But so while I was working with David, I said he, that was when he started having this horrible relationship with his management with Tony DeFries and and he was like um I Ava listen I can't finish the album I can't you know finish doing this project now because I have so many other things I have to deal with on my for my own stuff and I've, I'll come back to it and I said well what's going to happen to the masters and he goes I'll put them in my vault and they'll be safe but they weren't safe Tony got a hold of them and he released them unfinished Years and later, made, though. Yes, years later. But he made yeah. a lot of money because he used – David was the producer. So he made yeah. a lot of money. So you, you but, were surprised to see that they were released as an album. In oh, the my 90s. God. I, I yeah. was not only surprised. I was totally – I was totally so unhappy about it. Yeah. Because there was never any – he never asked me. I never received a dime from any of it he got all oh, really? the money. Wow. and so wow. you know to this day <laughs> to this day I, I i you know his tony defries was a lawyer so he knew how to keep me from getting anything from it um but anyway that's water under the bridge but yeah so as much as i enjoyed doing those things it, it had a sad ending for me because it was when once he got hold of the masters it, it was I could could not did not have any control over anything. Yeah. Wow. 
So one of the things you just said was that it, uh, the, the songs that if somebody um, comes across this, that they're going to hear were really demos. And I wanted to ask you specifically about I Am A Laser, that um, if, if, if somebody listening to this and has not heard the song, um, this, the music Bowie would later recycle for the song Scream Like a Baby on Scary Monsters. Right. Um, so the, what I've heard, I Am a Laser, it has almost identical music or, or identical music. It has your voice, which is tremendous. The lyrics have always struck me as unfinished. Is that, is that correct? Uh, no, no, no. Everything yeah. was unfinished with that. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Sounds, I mean, like, it, go ahead. No, 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 no. Keep telling. Keep telling. Them. No, no. It was like that was my that was my uh, point about it is that it was unfinished, and all yeah. those things that we were gonna would write more lyrics and 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 change this or change the arrangement or melody or whatever was never able to do that because. He never got a hold of it again. Tony took it yeah. and did whatever he wanted to do with it. So it seemed like um, Bowie um, had some of the ideas you were playing with at that time in his mind. So, like, again, with Scream Like a Baby, he, he recycled the music. And um, you mentioned God Only Knows. He recorded the song himself for tonight. Um, so it seemed like that, that what he was working on with you that never got really finished stayed in his head. Is that a fair assessment? That is a fair assessment. Yeah. And then fair, in the, the same thing with Sweet Thing, because Sweet Thing was that was meant to be my song, and then he really? took it and redid it. Yeah. I did not know that. Wow, that's yeah. that's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> oh, you you haven't heard my version of it? I never have. No. Oh no no no! You got to listen to my version of it. Go on, okay. it's on YouTube. Go on YouTube. I, Sweet I thing. will find it. Yeah, and I will and I will post that. Yeah, Earl Slick's yeah. playing guitar on it and everything. And I don't know how I I do I do not know how I don't. Uh, I don't know I how you missed that song. one. I don't know how you missed that one because that's one of the best songs that was on the whole Astronet's record. I no, I'm I, I actually have a copy of. Well, maybe it's a bootleg because that song is not on it. No, okay. it is a bootleg. It's a bootleg. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well. Um, th that threw me for a loop, but let me ask you a question <laughs> that I was so so scream like a baby. Um, Bowie's version of the song that you sang is "I Am a Laser," totally different lyrics, but the narrator of Bowie's version of the song, it, he's singing about how society cracks down on nonconformists, and I have always listened to the traits that he outlines that the larger society is against as traits that at some point in his life he embraced or embodied. And he has this line about, um, I'm mixed with other colors. And I'm wondering if that's an allusion to your relationship. Was that an issue at the time? Um, yeah, because David was all of a sudden becoming very much not loving and that is what fame is 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 kind of about. Is yeah. what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Is yeah. there any wonder yeah. I reject you first? Fame, 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 fame. You know what I'm saying? It's like he yeah. he saw he started to see fame as more of a a scab than a some wonderful thing. Like in the very beginning, he saw it as yeah. that you know you could be famous, but look at all these other bad things that could branch out from it. You know what I'm saying, and, yeah. and look at all the people that are, you know that are privileged, and look at all the people that aren't. In the way that you know, David didn't have a racist bone in his body, and the way he defended Michael Jackson on MTV in that interview right. he did with MTV, where he said, uh, "I'm just wanting to know why Michael Jackson's video isn't getting played as much as that." And the guy was like, "Well, well, well, you know, we have a format." And he could say, "No, I don't care about your format. It's his music." Why are uh, are you guys doing that to your artists, your black artists? And you know he was starting to feel social justice more than anything. I mean, when we would go out together, sometimes he know, knew that people would look at us strange, not just because we had he had I had blonde hair and he had red hair, but because I was black and he was white. Yeah, and um, he would 
he he would look at them like, I dare you to say something to me or us. He would have that that defiant, he was very defiant about racism and people that didn't like gay people and people that put people down. I mean, he was very, I, I loved everything that he stood for in that way, you know. I, you know, it occurred to me that um, uh, I don't know how much of this. I mean, you could tell me because you were dating him, but how much of before before he was before he knew you, he presented himself as bisexual and as gay. And I don't think that there was a major uh, performer that did. I think everybody was in the closet before that. And I I I reflect on did the way he presented himself. Um, then and you know dating you being so seen so prominently with you helped pave the way for the way our attitudes have become more uh, accepting of of, of people oh, yeah, and all their diversity. And that is why yeah. so many of his fans who are gay and 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 and, 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 and transgender and all that that's why they love him because yeah. he was never he was always for them. They, yeah. I mean I have fans that go you know. I was so confused when I was growing up, and they wouldn't accept me. And then I started listening to David Bowie, and I felt accepted. Yeah, yeah. And wow. that was his goal. He was not, you know, his his whole thing was, you know, I mean, I mean, I didn't follow David around like a lamb, so I can't say everything that he might or might not have done. But when he was with me, he was all man wanting a woman, you know. And if he yeah. wanted a, a man, I'm sure he would have done that too. But and most of that was about, you know, try sensate a little bit sensationalism to try to make yeah. people throw people off being, you know, uh, avant garde and being androgynous. Yeah. So I, I want to ask one more question that sort of gets into politics um, with the song about a song that was on Young Americans, which is "Somebody Up There Likes Me," which is oh, one of these, I love that yeah. song. So it's this beautiful song, right? And if you're not listening to it carefully, I, I don't know what it might sound like, but if you do, the lyrics, it sounds like he's singing about a, a demagogue. And it's almost, I know you, you are not shy about expressing your, your political views. It's almost, if you listen to the, the lyrics, like he's almost anticipating a Trump-like figure. Yeah, because he was very foreseeing and he was very forced he was very far-sighted in what he thought was going to happen in the future. You know, he wasn't for fascism or anything like that, for sure. But, you know, he could speak on, you know, um, what he, you know, the, the, the um, what's it called, George Orwell, Orwellian right. way that this country and this world looked like it might be going. And I'm actually... Speaking to myself, he was very far, he was ahead of his time. In the same way that somebody like Marvin Gaye, when he did What's Going On and all that other stuff, I mean, everything yeah. he's saying is going on now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, somebody up there likes me. We had the most, wow, that was such an emotional song to sing, especially the background parts. Oh, wow. Me yeah, and Robin and, and Luther. Yeah, mm -hmm. really. Um, and the the weird part about it is that we're now in the 50th anniversary of Young Americans, and so um, in in November I go to Amsterdam to do a Bowie tribute at the at the Athos, um, which is an incredible uh, auditorium there to perform um, with with a, a guy named Rias Barda, who is the the David Bowie star man of of, of Holland. And then, uh, and then I do in Dublin, Ireland, on February 31st. I do um, the. I'm going to be um, performing the Young Americans, some of the songs from the Young Americans album there for the for the anniversary. Wow, that's great. I I am hoping. Uh, I live in New York State. I am hoping that there's something that happens in Philadelphia and something that happens in New York for the 50th anniversary. Well, so, that would really be nice, you know. I don't know what yeah. it's going to be because they usually had Night of Stardust in Philly, which is great. Which I did a, a night, a two nights of Stardust. They, it was fantastic, but I don't know whether they, you know, you know, 
it seems to me that like Europe seems to be doing many more tributes because David was a British artist than mm-hmm. America now, you know. Um, but I hope, yeah, because really the anniversary starts now, but I think they were going to really be celebrating it more in 2025. So who knows? Maybe maybe so. Maybe yeah. so. Um, I'm sure there'll be some tributes, but I don't know what they are yet. Yeah, well, in, a, uh, in in New York or Philly or something. Well, I'm I'm very excited to find out. Uh, <laughs> so let me ask you this: Where you mentioned a couple of venues that you're going to be playing in Europe? Where else can people see you um, these days? Well, right now, you know, I'm just uh, starting a new, getting involved with management now, and then we're going to see what happens just opening for some other acts and things like that. But I haven't actually been doing a lot of live performance uh, other than Europe because I've been in Europe uh, two months ago. I was there doing the Bowie Tribute and then a month before that. So I've been doing most of my work out of Europe. Yeah. But when I'm doing yeah. any of it in America, I will definitely let you know and let your fans know. Yeah, I I I can't I I have not seen you perform in person, and when when uh, when I have that, oh, then you missed you know a treat, baby. You I know, a treat. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> so, it might be. I'm trying to. I'm putting together a band, and I I might be performing with this great band in in Los Angeles in the next year. So Los Angeles would probably be the first thing that would be a big deal. Um, yeah. But like I said, I'll let you know. I'll let all you. Wonderful, sweet fans out there, no, whatever. If you want to, if you want to come and see me, yeah, I know everyone will. So let me just ask you um, uh, just a couple closing questions. Um, and you know, in the first part of our discussion, um, we mentioned uh, the song that's out now, "Fire," and we mentioned the uh, Luther Vandross documentary that's coming out um, next year. Um, yes, yeah. and. Um, uh, uh, I, do, do you want to, we talked about that in the first part of the interview. Do you want to say anything more about either of those two projects, just uh, if anybody missed the first part? Um, um, yeah, well, like I say, the the uh, film about Luther Vandross, Never Too Much, it's coming out, I think, in uh, the end of November. Uh, uh, it'll be, just look it up. You, you can probably find yeah. it. Uh, in the AMC theaters, I think they're doing a tease trailer of it in all the AMC yeah. theaters. So you get a sneak preview. Um, but I know that it's not definitely going to be released to the actual full scale until until 2025. And as I was saying um, to your fans, uh, I'm in a, I'm in like 70 percent of it, and uh, you know I'm, I'm being interviewed, but most of it is live performance that I did with Luther on stage, and uh, the they they really captured it beautifully. I'm so proud of it. I really am, and. It'll give all of you people who love Luther Vandross and who don't know much about him a chance to to enjoy this wonderful artist and what he contributed to music. And um, the uh, our fifth is on November the seventh, twenty uh, twenty twenty four. Um, that's like forty days away from now, and it's uh, I'm going to be performing in Amsterdam, and. Um, then after that, I'll be in Dublin, Ireland in, in February doing the 50th anniversary of Young Americans, beginning mm-hmm. that. Great. Wonderful. Well, I look forward to seeing what's coming. Um, it, and, yeah, uh, and, and, and stay so, tuned for some new music, too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely will. So, Ava Cherry, you've been wonderful. Um, this has really been fascinating. I feel like I could talk to you all day, but I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> Let, Don, you're gonna, so funny. <laughs> I'm going to close with a question I ask everybody, and everybody says the same thing that they can't give me an answer because they give me a different answer tomorrow. But it's the same question I ask everybody at the close of my interviews, which is, what is your favorite Bowie song and album, whether you performed on it or not? Wow. Well, that's easy. I always, I, I, it's always going to be the same thing. When I first met David Bowie. Yeah. He asked me the the first date we had. He asked me, "What was what's your favorite song on my albums? Any of my albums?" <clears throat> and I said, "Moon Age Daydream," because it it was so romantic and so beautifully arranged, and the melodicness of it. And and I sing it in every tribute that I do to him. 
I that people love me to do that when they always go, Mude Spatry, Mude Spatry. Because that is, I feel that song in my soul so much, and it brings David to me. It channels me with him. So uh, when you go back and listen to Moon Age Daydream, guys, because it's one of his finest. Yeah, great. And what about the album? Uh, well, I would say, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite album. My, you know, um, I love the Latin Saint album, and I love the Ziggy Stardust album. Those are and, yeah. and Young Americans, of course. Those would be my three. Great. Well, Ava Cherry, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Um, thank I really you appreciate it. Uh, yeah. It was really thank you wonderful. For you do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. And God bless everybody. Stay safe. And let's one, let's love one another and, and try to support one another, okay? That's all I got to say to you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. God bless.